So why are so many of us millennials still trying to get our lives together? Doesn't it seem like the, uh, the baby boomers or, you know, our parents and grandparents are looking down at us thinking, when do they get themselves sorted? All this travel and oat lattes, you know, they need to work hard and save just like we did. But there's actually a little bit more to it. So firstly, we've both, we, both generations have grown up in really different times. So they grew up in a time when there was community spirit, there was work ethic, there was human contact, not just online contact. And children played in the streets, children played in nature. We grew up in a time where mothers are extremely stressed and normally both parents are working Children are scheduled and sent to millions of different classes and activities, or they're sat in front of an electronic device. And so we grew up seeing this um, vision being handed down to us that we should work hard and then we can have loads of stuff and we'll be happy. And we felt, I've already got loads of stuff and it's not really that fulfilling. Actually, what I'd really like is that human contact, you know, that, that, that attention and enjoyment and connection that we maybe craved. So there's a slightly different values there. So when you see those artsy people, those traveling people, those people who keep changing their mind, it's not because they're lazy. It's because they're trying to reconcile the problem of finding a way to contribute to this system, this economy, um, at, the, at the same time being true to themselves, but also actually surviving as well. So there's a few things which I think are very interesting about this shift between the generations. So we've got the fantastic theory by David Graeber about uh, bullshit jobs. So he says that Keynes, the sociologist in 1930, theorised that automation would produce a 15-hour work week. But sadly, we know that has not happened. Um, but instead, he says, it's created the phenomenon of bullshit jobs. So, and he categorises five main categories of bullshit jobs. One, the people who exist just purely to make other people look good, like PAs. Two, the people who exist to manipulate and um, influence other people, like lobbyists. Three, people who exist to fix pointless problems, like people who are there to calm people down when their baggage gets lost on a flight. And then we've got the people who are box tickers and they just pretend that stuff's happening when it may or may not be happening. Um, so survey administrators or compliance officers. And then five, we've got the, uh, what's five? The taskmasters. So the people who manage people who don't need managing or create work for people who don't need any extra work. And so we've been given this, this ideal um, of this system, but we're basically being asked to spend most of our time doing stuff that has no value for society or for ourselves. Because even we, we're in systems where the profit from that company and that organisation that we're in, it doesn't directly benefit us or our community a lot of the time. It's just benefiting the owner or the directors. Um, and so it's not, it's not a democratic business. It's we're sort of hired slaves. <laughs> but obviously the conditions are better than historically, but still. Um, then we have um, Lord David Willett's analysis in his book Pinch, who talks about how the baby boomer generation, so they're born sort of 1965 to 19, sorry, 1945 to 1965. Um, they was such a big cohort that they've shaped policy. So basically, they have 
consistently made it so that they've come off best in this system. Um, and because of the problems of this capitalist economy that we're part of, um, we have seen that, you know, the, the, the principles of this economy are that the co economy should grow 3% every year. And if it's not, then we have to sort of do some jiggling to make it happen. So then we do the quantitative easing, the printing money to keep things flowing and keep things managed. And now we've got this huge amount of debt that we're having to take on. So effectively, this generation's borrowed from the future, borrowed from future generations. Um, and through that, I mean, they've actually ended up doing very, very well. So millennials are the first generation to earn less than their cohort before them. In fact, if you're age 30 now, then you earn no more than someone aged 30 10 years ago. But the costs of rent, the costs of housing and the costs of living have gone up. So we're actually poorer. Um, we, we spend longer in rented accommodation. We have less space. We have, um, we have rent, if we live in a city where the wages are higher, the rents are so high that the benefit of that extra wage doesn't actually go to us, it just goes to our landlords, which are the baby boomers. Um, and between the late 60s and 2018, house prices increased by between 450 to 765% in London. And wages did not increase at that rate. In fact, we've had more and more austerity and cuts and the, the, the historically, the people who've had to pay for the uh, changes in benefit systems and pension changes have been the income taxes, which are the working people, which are little old us. So that's why when you feel like a failure and you feel like things are a bit tough, um, we are actually systematically disadvantaged by this system. So, um, in fact, um, Lord David Willits in his book, he actually talks about how uh, the boomers have accumulated £6.5 trillion of wealth in their generation. The next generation, Generation X, they've accumulated 2.2 trillion. And then the millennials, which is 1985 onwards, they have only got 0 0.4. So I think it's something to think about, you know. And then we've also got the issue of the climate crisis that we've inherited, which is another kind of demotivating factor to get into this system because we are living in a system which survives on profit and consumption and yet we're on a finite planet where continuous consumption is what is driving us over a cliff so we really don't want to get involved in that so we want to change something so if you are a baby boomer I ask you to think about how you vote and whether you're voting to advantage the most vulnerable and the most needy in society or whether you're voting for what suits you because we need to think about what the generation coming are going to have to deal with and provide something for them to to survive i mean the the boomer generation had amazing pensions where they have guaranteed amount every year whereas we've got a little pot which is working out about a quarter of the amount of contributions that employers used to have to make and that pot is the amount that we get. We're not going to get that amount every year. So we have to hope that we budget it correctly, you know, which is slightly scary. So anyway, what's really good at this moment is that people are starting to talk about the alternatives. So things like a circular economy, where all the energy that goes into the system is uh, fed back into the system and we only harvest the surplus, where things are done locally, where there's local democracy, where people have uh, a system where they actually feel like they have a voice. Because we can't, as the millennials, make a huge difference through voting because we are actually in the minority.
There's this idea that things are just getting better and better and millennials are just complaining. It just goes better and better and better. But actually, that huge increase in wealth was purely because of oil. Now, there was a report done by the Club of Rome in the 60s, and they forecast that the peak of oil uh, would happen around the 70s, and then economic uh, growth, or sorry, income growth, wealth, would peak, and then standard of living would go down, 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 very sharply, back to zero, back to how it was before um, all of the mod cons that we have. So... What's really scary is that all of their predictions in their data are coming true and um, are in line with what we're experiencing. So we did experience a peak and we are actually experiencing um, a loss in quality of living. And also there's been an illusion of continued progress through production of lots of cheap stuff. Um, but it's actually not been substantial real life benefit so anyway if you're one of our generation or if you're any generation why not put our efforts into bringing forward as soon as we can those solutions that are sustainable that are uh, empowering and that are actually meaningful and create value for society not just putting profit as paramount because we can do better right anyway let's talk about more next time like and subscribe